साईराम स्टुडंट्स आय वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू वन्स अगेन टू द लेसन नंबर सिक्स द सब्सटेंसेस इन द डेली यूजर्स लेट्स रिकॉल वन्स अगेन वॉट एवर सो फार वी हैव लर्न इन दिस लेसन सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द मैन्युफॅक्चरिंग ऑफ द पेपर सो यू नो दॅट द पेपर इट इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द प्लांट सो वॉट टाईप ऑफ द प्लांट इज यूज फॉर द पेपर मेकिंग so as you can see that over here coniferous tree like mine they are used for the manufacturing of the paper so we have already learned the process of how exactly the paper has been manufactured so what are the process so you can see that over here here in the image the plant trees the wood is obtained from the plant am i right once we obtain the wood then what we do we do the peeling of the logs means what if the bark is present on the logs we remove that and later on in the next step we cut down the wood into small small pieces once we cut down the wood into the small small pieces we soak it into certain kind of the chemical so that we can get a pulp is that clear so you can see that over here once the pulp is obtained by over soaking in the chemical we can add the dyes in it to impart the color and strength to the paper and later on this pulp it is passed to the roller to obtain the paper so once the paper is obtained here in this process then this paper it is wound around the reel over here so this is how the paper has been manufactured in the, with the help of the pine trees in the industries but let me tell you students over here as you know that the paper and wood they both are closely related as i told you that we want to save the trees so if we want to save the trees then we have to use the paper sparingly sparingly means what limitedly because if we increase the use of the paper then we will cut down more and more trees so if we cut down more and more trees then the pollution level will increase and we want to decrease the pollution so if we want to decrease the pollution then what we have to do we have to use the paper in the limited amount so that's why students now i'm going to tell you certain points to remember which you have to follow in your day to day life as well so what are the points to remember let's see that over here so there are certain points to remember point number 1 point number 1 says that do not tear up the blank pages of the notebook do not throw away old notebooks with the blank pages that means what unnecessarily do not tear the blank pages of the notebook if suppose if old notebooks blank page is there you can take that and you can use it for the rough work or you can use it for the reuse purpose but do not throw away the blank pages unnecessarily so that is the first point second point here as you can see that whenever it is possible try to use a pencil and a slate because you know that the pencil and slate they can be it doesn't con any kind of the uh, pollution so that's why if it is possible then we should go for the pencil and slate method instead of the paper and pen method so this by this by doing this we can save the use of the plants okay we can save the use of the paper as well now the next thing as you can see that over here the blank side of the advertisement pamphlet inner side of the postal envelope the blank side of the calendar pages and other such writable surfaces can be used to make notes list to cover the books etc do not throw away or burn up such paper until it has been fully utilized like this that means what most of the time you must have seen that calendar or uh, any type of the pamphlet etc they have the blank side on the other side is that clear so we don't have to throw it like that only so if you can see that there is a blank space over there so we can use that blank space for ourselves is that clear so this is how we can save the plants and afterward you can see that over here cooperate with the people who collect paper from the garbage or buy scrap paper these people help in the proper recycling of the resources so you must have seen that at our home also whenever we get the newspaper we do not throw newspaper in the garbage what we do we make a stack of the newspaper and that newspaper we give it we give it to the raddi wala why we give newspaper to the raddi wala because that raddi wala will give the newspaper to the news factory where the paper has been again recycled 
so this is how we use the recycling process for the manufacturing of the paper so that's the reason students you must have seen that our old notebook and our textbook our digest etc after use we don't throw in the garbage right we give it to radhiwala so that that paper can be reused again and again for the future purpose so that we can stop the cut down of the trees so by doing this method we can save the trees in the larger extent is that clear and do you know that students in india the first factory to manufacture newsprint that is paper to be used for the newspaper was established in nepangar in madhya pradesh in 1955 and paper is also manufactured at the sonagarh in gujarat and at the same time in maharashtra there is a paper factory at ballarpur near the chandrapur so these are the certain paper factory in our india so here the manufacturing of the paper has been started at the first place so now onward the paper industry they are expanded now in the larger quantity we are producing them according to our use is that clear now after paper now you must have seen that in our daily uses also we use a lot, lot of thread we use clothing material etc we use blanket etc we use different different type of the dress material am i right so all this dress material and all this blanket and cloth we get from the fiber we get from the thread so can you tell me students over here from which substance in nature can we get these three trees and fiber yeah so you know that we get thread and the fiber from the cotton so by using cotton we can get the cotton cloth and at the same time you must have seen that here this is a silk worm okay you must have seen this so silk worm it is necessary silk worm is necessary for getting the silk cloth so silk worm and cotton these are the natural material which gives the thread in the larger quantity so is that clear so cotton and the silk worm they are giving us a larger quantity cloth is that clear naturally but let me tell you that again they are natural thing so cotton and silk worm they are limited but as the population is increasing day by day we have to increase the production of the cloth am i right so here you can see that how exactly we get the uh, silk from the silk worm so you can see that over here silk is a natural thread or the fiber it is obtained from the cocoon of the silk worm what is the cocoon the small form of the silk worm so it is a worm kind of structured small so this small worm kind of the structure it is called as what cocoon from one cocoon 500 meters to 1300 meter of thread can be obtained can you imagine that this one small silk worm can give you this much amount of the thread it is established that the silk was first on the large quantity in china so in china the silk was produced in the larger quantity so this is the first place but nowadays we can also obtain the silk in the larger quantity by rearing the silk worm in our area so this is the one of the way to obtain the natural thread so i just told you that as the population is increasing day by day we want the more and more amount of the cloth right so as you can see that over here from the time it was uh, thought that the artificial yarn would be produced to meet the clothing it needs to an increasing population much research and progress has taken place in this field innumerable kind of synthetic or artificial thread are right now available so right now we have manufacturing manufactured already synthetic and the artificial fiber so which are the synthetic and artificial fiber let's see that over here so whatever fiber i am going to tell you right now they all are the synthetic they all are the artificial fiber so which are the artificial fiber let's see that over here so as you can see that here nylon nylon is the artificial fiber dacron is the artificial fiber terrelin is the artificial fiber terrin is the artificial fiber polyester is the artificial fiber and last but not least rayon is the artificial fiber so this is the list of the thread which we can obtain artificially instead of using the natural things like cotton and the silk worm is that clear so now let's see students how we can obtain nylon and rayon now so there must be certain kind of the artificial method so here you can see that these are the synthetic thread so this is how the synthetic thread looks like you must have seen that at your home also am i right so now let's see how this synthetic threads are obtained by various method 
so first of all let's talk about the nylon so now you can see that over here nylon do you know that why we call it as nylon the reason is that first nylon was invented at the same time in new york and london also so in new york country and in london country at the same time this type of the fiber was invented so therefore the initial of the new york is ny the initial of new york is ny and the initial of london is lon so that's how we combined the two letters we combined the initial of the two words that is ny from new york and lon from london so this is how the word became nylon so did you understand how nylon word came into the existence so nylon ny stands for the new york lon stands from the london as this is the first country from where the nylon was invented is that clear and most importantly as you can see that over here nylon thread have a shine and they are very strong transparent and they are water resistance basically they are water resistance so mostly you must have seen that our umbrella raincoat etc they are mostly made up of the type of the nylon thread so that we can get protection from the water so nylon thread are basically transparent they are very strong and they are water resistance is that clear so water resistance is a property of the nylon thread is that clear now the next here you can see that over here these nylon threads can be used for clothing purpose they can use for the fishing nets and even they can use for the rope so this type of the rope you must have seen at our home also is that clear so these hope uh, this type of the rope and the fishing nets they are made up of nylon material okay so now you understood about the nylon material students now let's see the next one now the next thing which we are going to learn that is about the rayon now what do you mean by rayon how it is obtained so let me tell you that cotton and wood pulp cotton and wood pulp it is dissolved in a chemical cotton and wood pulp it is dissolved in the chemical called sodium hydroxide what is the name of the chemical sodium hydroxide so sodium hydroxide it is mixed in the cotton and wood pulp then the threads are obtained from this solution with the help of the machine so the thread which are obtained with the help of the machine they are our nylon material so now did you understand how exactly the nylon is obtained N sorry rayon is obtained okay so now you can see that over here now rayon how the rayon is exactly obtained here so you just as you can see that over here rayon as these threads have shine strength they are said to be synthetic silk what we call them as synthetic silk why we call them as synthetic silk and why we call them as rayon because the reason is that they appear to be shining very bright like a sun's ray they appear like a shining bright like sun's ray that's why we call them as what rayon is that clear why we call them as rayon because they appear to be shining bright that's why we call them as what rayon is that clear so why we call them rayon and so these these are how the rayon cloth looks like here so students you did you understand whatever things we have learned today let's recall once again what we have learned today so today we learned about the different type of the synthetic fiber so there are list of the synthetic fiber as you can see nylon decron terelin terin polyester rayon these are the list of the synthetic fiber which we use in our daily uses and one more thing what is nylon nylon it is a type of the thread which is artificially discovered in the new york and london country so that's why to give credit to the both the countries we took the initial ny from new york and lon from london so that's how the name became nylon and one more thing how the rayon is obtained rayon it is obtained by cotton and wood pulp which is mixed with the chemical called as what sodium hydroxide and when we make the solution we obtain the thread and those thread they are called as what rayon and why we call them as a rayon because they are shining bright like sun's rays and that's why we call them as what rayon so we'll stop here the next part of this topic will continue in the next session bye bye take care